I mean, in 2017, Rafa Nadal won his 10th Roland Garros title, did not drop more than four games in a set the entire tournament, only lost six games in the final, his 15th slam, so all time past Pete Sampras on that list. Andy Roddick joins the program, freshly uh, shaven, new, new haircut for uh, Andy, looking good. Jim and I still haven't cut our hair, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, what did you make of that domination from Nadal in 2017 following the fact that he had, you know, withdrawn the year before and gotten upset by Djokovic before that? Well, I think it's safe to say that his performance in 2017 is much better than what could be my last haircut. <laughs> uh, you, you know, when you're when you're watching Rafa, and I think I the, the other year that kind of reminded me of 17 was the uh, 2008 Roland Garros where I'm sitting there watching at home because that's often what I did during the second week of Roland Garros, even as an active player. But when he's kind of creating space on the court where you're seeing 50% of his shots actually crossing the sideline before it crosses the baseline, he's causing work for the other players. And as Jim uh, Jim mentioned the other day, you know, it gets a little hot. The ball starts bouncing. He kind of crosses the court. He's adding two or three feet of court on every side just by virtue of where that ball is bouncing. It makes it pain for everyone else. It makes you feel like you have to serve 85% first serves to even be able to get through your own service game. So, um, you know, he... he it's weird for to say that Rafa may have had a chip on his shoulder at Roland Garros, but I absolutely think that was the case in 2017 based on his loss to uh, Novak and then the injury of the year later. When you Should I pick up, Steve? Yeah, go for it, Jim. Okay. I'll take it. This remote thing's super, super comfortable. Um, look, <laughs> as, luck would, as luck would have it, Andy, on that Sunday when Stan would go play Rafa, it would be very warm. And that's bad for Vavrinka. He's a bulldozer, but he's not one of the tallest players with that one-handed backhand. Tough to create power from up here, as we've seen over the years for even Roger Federer. So for him, the conditions didn't even go into his favor. So everything clicked into gear for Rafa. We showed you uh, en route to that 10th uh, that title. It just lost 35 games. 08, you're referring to that year where he was so dominant as well. He dropped 42 games. But when we looked at his competition in 2017 versus 2008, he placed a, a much higher, faced a much higher level of competition across the board, the average ranking much higher. So for me, this is his all-time best performance at a major. For, for Nadal to dominate the field the way he did so thoroughly, was, uh, it was just amazing to, to witness. Andy, this, okay, this now, was... Steve. This, <laughs> We're just gonna, all right, Jim, Andy. Uh, this, this was La Decima, right? This was the year of the 10. He won, he won his 10th at Monte Carlo. He won his 10th at Barcelona. Wins his 10th at Roland Garros. I mean, there are some really good tennis players that haven't won just 10 titles. I mean, put that in perspective for us. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I remember in, I mean, it was 05, 06. It was probably 06 when he had won his second uh, Roland Garros title. And my, my trainer, Doug Spreen, was like, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen someone so dominant on uh, on one service before. He goes, I think this guy's going to win eight Roland Garros titles. And I said, Doug, let's not be victims of the moment. There's a big difference between two and eight. And it turns out I was right. Rafa didn't win eight Roland Garros titles. <laughs> Andy, you think about Americans in Roland Garros and what they have done uh, over the last, what, 65 years. You got four, four titles. And Michael Chang won it. Jim won it twice. And then Andre Agassi won it. Uh, what, what's been the issue for Americans in Paris? Well, I, I, I just think it, it, it goes to one services that, that you know and grew up on. I know Jim spent a lot of time uh, on the clay, and he's, uh, you know, he's the only guy who actually won it twice. Um, you know, for me, it was different because even the there, there's clay courts and then there's specific to uh, Roland Garros. You know, I always describe the clay. And when you get to Rome, which I actually played OK at and some other places where I, I had won titles on clay, you would get to Roland Garros and the clay, the consistency was more like a baking powder as opposed to like uh, the other clay feels like salt. So for me, I wasn't a great mover on clay, but that was uh, kind of amplified by the court surface. I always felt like I would serve split step and then I would kind of struggle to find my footing a little bit and if you're not a natural uh, mover on clay in the first place then there's kind of an, a, another expected level to kind of conquer uh, it really exposed uh, movement and I think that's been the case with a lot of American players uh, throughout the years uh, our uh, our present company uh, excluded Mr. Courier. <laughs>